Welcome ladies and gentlemen, the deal is sealed. My EV is ordered and on the way. Orange means green, orange means green. All right, let's get it, let's get it. Summer went by so rapid. How did that happen? But sun is shining. Today we are going to talk about the hidden reality, the hard truth of EVs where nobody talks about. And we are going to do that none other than with a test day at BMW with all of the electric vehicles. So right now we need to go one hour that way. For now on, we can enjoy this four cylinder MX-5. <laughs> that exhaust is too good. I don't know if you can see the sparkles of water on the window. I don't want to put on the wipers right now because otherwise it will leave marks. And we don't want marks because the car was clean. Five minutes ago I was talking about the sun, which is nowhere to be seen right now. But we are getting a little rainbow over there in the distance. There she is, the sun. Blue skies ahead. In Belgium it can be like four seasons in one day. But I like this, I like the sun. I'm going to test drive all of the electric uh, fleet of BMW in Bruges. And we will see and give my honest opinion about owning an EV, driving an EV, the good things, the bad things, and yeah, that's the plan for today. Welcome to BMW in Bruges. And what would be an electric vehicle experience without a real combustion engine? We've got the new one series to start with, and then we've got the iX, I think the iX one or three, and don't ask me a lot about those models. I'm just here to test drive them and to experience the feeling of driving an EV. And Maybe that will be an upgrade for in a few years. And off we go, the first car of today. We are in the new One Series. And as I said with the iX1, I'm really loving the big display port mode, as you do. Ooh, okay, okay, BMW, I see it. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> and off we go in the next vehicle. We are in the i4, a real business vehicle, the first EV of today. This was also my uh, watch list for my new business vehicle, but sadly it was a bit out of my budget. Oh, helicopter flying over. Now there is no sound because we are in an EV. But EVs mean real quick acceleration. Okay, we are going to slow down a bit and then push the throttle down. Oh. <laughs> Instant gaining of momentum is incredibly fast. That's what makes EVs, especially because they have a lot of power, fun. <laughs> you need to test everything of the car. Eh? Launch control, comfort, sport mode, everything. But it's proved as a business vehicle, that's for sure. We're entering the city of Damme. Beautiful city. A lot of Faggio scooters. <laughs> like these gloss kind of controls everywhere. Feels super luxury. All right. Off for another silent drive in the new BMW iX. I just saw in the YouTube studio that the last video went great. We got a lot of views on the flames and lots of fast accelerations at the Chateau du Bissui. Bissui. Uh, whatever. It's incredibly interesting to see that there's still more interest in combustion engine cars than in EVs but I'm still going to give it a try and explain the good, the bad about my experience with them because as I said I am open to change but I'm not going to change, you know? I want to experience different things, I want to give it a go but we are not going to leave combustion engines behind, that's for sure. We need a V we need a V12, we need a V8, we need everything alive. Just like the MX-5, 
it's not going anywhere it's staying in my garage it's mine you know there's only up from here and the only question is when so today I wanted to talk more about the good and the bad about EVs I will start with some good things which are incredibly hard to find now that's not really that case but they are good for day-to-day -day traffic I'm really liking it so far that's only the case for me because I live less than an hour away of my work and that's not the case for everyone you still need to have the infrastructure to charge your car because when you have a car when you have an EV you need to charge it that happens when you buy it you need to recharge it every single time you need to get somewhere further you know and for me is the case very simple I can charge at my work I don't live far away from my work and I've almost always a full charge full battery so I can drive anywhere you know but in the case you need to go somewhere fast and you are just on your way you have 100 kilometers left and you need to do 300 kilometers yeah you're not going anywhere so that's one thing for the people who have a charging station at home or at work or don't live close by it is a really convenient but if you don't have it it's probably a nightmare but for me it's good but I, I expect not everyone has the opportunity to charge at work and live close at work and charge always at work like another good thing about EVs is that they are fast we saw it this morning the EVs have instant torque instant power and you can accelerate incredibly fast but that's the only good thing in my opinion that gives me some energy to drive them because there's no emotion you can add the sound effects yeah but that's not the same you know it's not like your exhaust sounds and a bit of pops pops and bangs but it's just sound well, and it's fake you know so yeah that were my good points about uh, EVs the power and for me it's convenient because I live close by work and I can charge always there are also some things that I don't like about EVs like for example the fact that we are in Belgium almost being forced as a fleet uh, mainly to buy them because in the year of 2025 or 2030 they want to have all electric vehicles which is kind of absurd if you think about it like the new like the new cars you purchase need to be electric so we are almost being forced and what I just heard from today is that they are going to tax the new EVs for the next year so it's done with bonuses and premiums from the government we are being taxed of course because now they have less profit from normal gas cars which they also make a lot of money on so they need to get some money from somewhere and that's by taxing your energy yeah it's just foolish for a private person to buy an EV right now it is a lot of money to buy the car and the initial infrastructure to get started okay it may be a bit more uh, profitable after you drive 60,000 kilometers with the car yeah okay but you still need a lot of money to buy it for the first time and that's what really holds people away I think from buying it we are being forced it's a little bit too expensive they are becoming more and more available and cheaper for like the standard introduction models but yeah and then you also have the people who think EVs are better for nature than normal cars are but by the time you have your car on your driveway it has already been traveled to several boats several uh, mining stations to get your batteries and stuff I don't believe that joke I only pick an EV because I am getting the opportunity to get a free car as a business vehicle and it saves me miles and maintenance on this car that's why I'm going to drive it just for my day-to-day -day traffic to work and back so what I was saying is that EVs are good in some ways and bad in other ways and I don't like the fact that they are trying to take us away from combustion engines as it is our passion as me myself as a car enthusiast and I love this car I love this car non-electric is the best car you can get but the way they are trying to force our passion out of the way just sounds incredibly crazy but for now on I stay with combustion engines I keep this car I'm not going to sell it and buy an EV no that's not the case I'm still going to chase 
and upgrade my cars in the future. And maybe one day we'll get a V8, a V10, a V12. Who knows? Now it's time to head on home in this beautiful MX-5. With almost 31,000 kilometers right now. But from now on, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.